Hi, I'm Jocelyn. Welcome to class. Today we're doing a cauliflower curry. And that is in, of course, the book that we're working from, if you have it. If you don't, it's okay. The, rest, the recipes are very thorough. So fast e the Fast Easy Vegan Cookbook on page 467, the cauliflower curry. That's what we're doing. So now I got this monster big cauliflower. It was on sale at the grocery store. So I'm going to cut this baby in half because there are just two of us. But do you see this little discolored bits? That's mold starting to happen, which happens with every cauliflower on the planet sooner or later. So let me just get rid of the half that I'll do something else with. And then, you know, I like to throw a few things on the ground and uh, like that. Oh, okay. That's the stuff on the ground. So let me scrape off some of this discoloration that's starting here. And that's good. And then I want to um, clear my board of all the moldy bits, mold dust or whatever it is. And then we'll have a clean board to work from. Voila. Okay. I'm going to core this, and the way you do this is very simple. Here is the stem. We want to get rid of that. So you kind of make a V cut in there. Cut off the stuff on the top. Try not to let it roll on the floor. And there you've got your cauliflower which we're still gonna cut up even more into little individual florets. Okay. Sometimes you cut them, sometimes you can just pull them apart. So this is what we're looking for about this size. I think that's a really nice bite size without overdoing it, you know. So sometimes, the way I think about bites, it's like if you've ever watched uh, uh, footage of Dizzy Gillespie playing, you know, the bebop king, ooh, he was amazing. His cheeks puffed out <laughs> so enormously, like way more than a squirrel whose cheeks are full of nuts. Yeah, he was, uh, he was something else, but... Um, of course, his music was heaven, as most jazz is, in my opinion. Um, and he was a very funny, lovely person. So what a nice combination, right? I don't know why, but I always really like to find out that the people I like are good people, you know? It's especially nice when you're supporting them by buying their products. Cauliflower is really cool. It just has these little segments to it. Okay. That's a lot of cauliflower. So even for a half a cauliflower, wow, you can do a lot of stuff. So it's no wonder that cauliflower was the uh, vegetable of the moment a few years back. And everybody was experimenting with it and doing really all kinds of great stuff with it and etc. I'm not a huge fan of the flavor of cauliflower. I don't dislike it, but I don't particularly like it. So for me, a cauliflower dish always has to have a lot of other stuff going on. And then I like it just fine. All right. But the first thing we're going to do, step two, is, okay, we've cleaned 
and cut our cauliflower. Oh, okay, I know what I wanted to tell you. So, in, in my book, if you're using my book, a lot of times you will get these uh, ingredients like one head of cauliflower, one cup of this, one, or one cabbage, or like that. Now, we all know that cauliflower can be this big or it can be this big. So what do you mean by one head? I mean, it doesn't really matter what size it is. So you're gonna use the amount of that head or whatever it is, bunch, uh, whatever. Um, use the amount that you think you're gonna eat. Or if you like leftovers, twice as much. You know, however you wanna work that because that is absolutely personal preference. So I just turned on the stove. We're gonna steam the cauliflower while we're preparing the other stuff. So let me get this into our steamer basket. And then we can prep our tomatoes, garlic, and all of our other ingredients. Woo, I'm gonna sneeze. Wait for it. There's our... Excuse me. Allergies. Okay. So, let's... get busy with the slicing and the dicing and the mincing and the chopping. Okay. Okay. That's very minced and nice. Okay, we'll leave that there. onion going. We don't need to mince the onion, we're just going to dice it. showing you how um, I like to relate to an onion. It's nothing you're going to learn in the schools because it's not the official way, but it's a way that works very well for me. And so I use it. I wish there was a way to stop throwing things on the floor. <laughs> All right. Now what we want to do with the onions, and ultimately the garlic, is saute them for a little bit. In fact, let me get this pan hot over here. All right, done. Done, da -da done, done, done. Wait a minute on the garlic. I don't want it to burn or get bitter. So it's just going to be that. Now, did I pay attention to when I put those the cauliflower on? No, I'll say it's not even doing that. So this curry, this makes a really delicious dish. There's lots of interest, both visual, textural, and flavor-wise. So I just want to soften the onions. It's going to take a couple minutes, and then I'm going to put in the, the garlic. And then we'll start layering, adding the other stuff. Now, to my mind, what really makes this dish, we'll talk about the ingredients. We've got... Plant yogurt, whatever kind you like. We've got a can of diced tomatoes. 
I'm enthralled with petite dice, but it doesn't matter. I mean, there's no... Before I discovered petite dice, you know, little tiny bits of tomato, um, I was exclusively using diced tomato, whose dice, it's about that big. It's much, a much bigger bite. So it's just purely aesthetic, whatever you like. One cup of frozen peas that we're going to add last because when you let peas cook, they turn gray and mushy. Um, and a tablespoon, just a tablespoon of curry, whatever curry you like. Now curry is one of those things, boy oh boy, it goes, runs the gamut from sweet to at flaming hot. So um, spend, if you like curry, spend some time exploring it. And uh, uh, stick with the one that you find that you really like the most. And of course, you can get into that whole world, go down the rabbit hole of making your own. Yeah, I've been there. I buy it. it it's just... Uh, curry isn't one of my uh, favorite tastes on the planet. I, I like it fine. I'm often not in the mood for it. Um, but when I like it, when I'm in the mood, I love it. So if you are very fond of curry, and as some people eat it every day, they just, wow, curry lovers. Like, like uh, wine aficionados or coffee people, those are big worlds. And of course spices, it's even more so. All right, I'm going to... Add the garlic now that the onions are softening. Let that garlic cook for about a minute, and then I'm going to put that in. Because tomatoes are acidic, I don't know if you can see the pan. They deglaze a pan. They will lift all that uh, the brown stuff is all flavor that's sticking to the pan. These are the sugars from the onions that are releasing and cooking and adding so much flavor. So we don't want to leave that in the pan. I'll show you. what. Okay. Tomatoes. Do you see how it just cleaned that pan up instantly? Look at that. It's like magic. I love to cook. Put some tomatoes over there. Yeah. We grabbed that flavor. We stole it right out of the pan. Good for us, I say. Let's see how... Ooh, steaming. Coming along. And we can let these onions soften and cook further while we're waiting. Might as well pour in the, uh, the curry. All right. And then when the cauliflower is done, I'll add this in here, put the peas in, mix in a half a cup of uh, yogurt, alternative. Cover it for a minute, let it all just kind of sit together and make friends, and then we're ready to dish up. Pretty cool, huh? That was easy. Even though it isn't done yet. Okay, so I'm going to let this simmer down. You don't need to watch me push this stuff around the pan, I don't think. And uh, when the cauliflower's ready is when I'll get back to you. Okay, our cauliflower is steamed. That took about five minutes, maybe a little less. So what I'm going to do now is get these cauliflower bits into our pan. Get yourself a steamer basket if you don't have one. 
I got this uh, big soup pot years ago with the steamer basket on it. It's my most used item. I've had it for probably 30 years. And the counterpart of this, the big pot that goes under, it, I'm using as a soup pot right now. So I just filled up my other saute pan and that's that. Okay. Let's get these delicious looking fluffy cauliflower bits. And because I steamed it, I don't really have to worry about it getting mushy. I mean, it, they would eventually, all these bits, but um, five minutes, it's, they're soft, they're cooked, and they're not mushy. Love it. it they are the perfect texture. There's a little bit of uh, toothiness there. Isn't that pretty? Coming together nicely. Now let's put our frozen peas in there. We're going to stir them just enough to wilt, melt, I should say. There, look at the green. Look how beautiful that is. You know, I'm sorry, but if people are not paying attention to how your food looks, you're missing out on half the experience. It's when you get that visual connection to what you think looks delicious, it starts your whole salivary glands going, your digestive system is getting excited and getting ready, and it's all part of the whole package. So, oh, forgot to put salt. I use it, not everybody does. It's fine. Either way, there's so much flavor in this that, okay, that looks gross. Yeah, I'm not a fan of yogurt, except as a, uh, a saucy thing. And then, woo, the best. So what we're doing is we're just adding a little bit of uh, tanginess to this already flavorful curried cauliflower here. And it's simple, it's exotic, it's fragrant, and it is so delicious. So don't be afraid to uh, take a simple dinner and put it in front of company. Now you can serve this with rice, obviously, or potatoes. You know, I think it's a good idea to be a little more creative than just rice and potatoes all the time. So think about your starches. Um, I'm kind of loving buckwheat right now. I'm working with it. There's a woman, an Israeli chef, who's doing really interesting things with buckwheat. And I'm going to try and see how it goes, and then uh, I'll share it with you if I like it. But she uses buckwheat to um, instead of egg although she's not doing souffles. But anyway, her stuff looks intriguing and delicious. Israeli food is just gorgeous. Okay. There's your dinner. Yummy, yummy cauliflower curry, page 467 of the Fast Easy Vegan Cookbook. Bon appetit. That was easy. Have a wonderful meal. See you soon.